This is the fifth video in a multi-part tutorial on how to acquire daily weather data for a specific place, calculate monthly and annual averages, and calculate heating and cooling degree days. In the previous videos, we looked at how we could acquire daily weather data from Weather Underground, download that data onto our computer, and then calculate monthly means as well as heating and cooling degree days within Excel. In this last video, what we're going to do is we're going to look at how we can graph the data. But before we do that, Let's look at how we can bring this data as it stands into a Word document if we wanted to submit it as part of our profile. So this information, which is nicely organized, can simply be copied by highlighting the cells that contain the data that we're interested in, choosing to copy, and then opening up a Word document, for example, and simply pasting that table into the Word document. And it's actually already in the form of a table. So if we wanted to format it within the Word document, we would right-click and go to, for example, borders and shading and choose how we want the table to be uh, displayed. And so we can choose, for example, to apply a grid so that it kind of shows us what the table is going to look like automatically. And we can change colors and font and all the rest to, to, to uh, make the table look a little prettier. Uh, and so this is important. We want to be able to see this summary data, which is, this is, in a way that's easy to understand and shows us the information. But um, Tables are good, but visuals are even better. And so um, graphing or char charting your data is a powerful way of communicating information. And a visual presentation allows people to quickly see patterns or trends in data that would not uh, be apparent from a table. Uh, in, in addition, also with the visualization, it's often a lot more efficient to understand what the data is showing you. So in the case of looking at this table, uh, although we can see what's going on, I think there are some patterns here that might be more apparent in a graph form. So let's go back to Excel. So if we wanted to create a graph out of this uh, data, we could. all we need to do really is select the columns of information that we want to see. So in this case, I'm going to highlight the B and C columns of information. And I'm going to go to the Insert menu. And I'm going to choose the Line Graph, because this is the kind of data that uh, this is the appropriate graph form for this. And I'm going to pick the line graph with markers, since we have individual points here, and choose that. And right off the bat, we have a display of our data in a graph form. And we can format this by choosing options up here. Um, and we can actually edit individual items on the graph itself to make it look the way we want to. Once we're satisfied with the graph as it appears here, we can again simply right-click, copy, go into our Word document, make a space for it, and simply paste that graph into our Word document, and that's it. That's, as, that's how hard it is. Um, with the heating and cooling degree days, I think this one uh, is a slightly different kind of graph. Rather than using the line graph for this data, we're going to use bar graphs. So again, we're going to highlight the columns with the information in them, and we're going to go to Insert, and we're going to create, instead of a line graph, we're going to choose a column graph. And specifically, we want a stacked column graph. And you'll see why in a moment. We'll choose stacked column. And you can see right off the bat that this what this shows us is for every month, we have the heating degree days, right? But we also got heating and cooling. The red indicates cooling degree days, and the blue indicates heating degree days. And you can see that where the two are present, one stacked on top of the other, you can see the total amount of energy that was used for that month, or that would be used, and how much of it comes from uh, heating versus how much comes from cooling. So it's a real efficient way of showing the data. Um, if we want to see this graph a little better, one thing we can do is we can move it into its own uh, worksheet. And the way that you do that is that you right-click on the graph, and you say Move Chart. And then you say New Sheet, Create a New Chart. And it'll basically move the graph into its own worksheet. So you can see it's expanded. Um, one thing we notice here is that the uh, months, which should be along the bottom, are not showing up. And that's because we didn't specify that column when we selected columns to put in the graph. And that's really easily remedied. If we want to add the column, the uh, month names the, uh, the x-axis, we can just right-click on the chart area and choose Select Data. And then in the, where it says horizontal category x-axis label, that's going to be along the bottom. So we'll say edit, and it'll ask us to select a range. And what we do here is we click on this button right here, and then we navigate over to the column that we want to use as the x-axis. And in this case, it's the month, the names of the months. 
we highlight those right so that we have the running border around them you'll see the range appear in the access labels dialog window hit the enter key on the keyboard and then OK and then OK and you see that the months are added to the bottom of the graph and if you want again you can you can format the graph to add other items uh, to make it look the way you want to okay? again also if you want to add this to your Word document you can just right click on it copy and then go to your Word document and go to the location add a little space and then paste that chart into your Word document and there you go you've got your data graphed